The world of Outlast can be a terrifying place. So whether you're trying to get through this madness on a first playthrough, or you want to just pick up some speedrun strats, this is the video for you. Here we go right at the beginning of the game after skipping the intro. We're going to do a nice little jump into the gate there. Little hops like that you will save you a lot of time and help even in some escape situations. So make good usage of them. We'll point them out as we go along here. You'll notice we will be doing a lot of, obviously a lot of running, a lot of use of the camera, but uh, we will not be doing a lot of hiding. So that will be a perhaps a shocking thing to some of those seeing this game for the first time or seeing a run like this for the first time. And uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and make our way into the asylum. A move our character will forever regret. We're going to hop around the sofa, though, jump into the gap here. And it might take a little bit of getting used to to do some of those hops, but overall, they're not too bad. It's more or less just knowing to do them, when to maximize each leap, everything like that. We're going to crawl through this vent and notice how I'm going to be turning sideways here. This is so we can fall out without having our character kind of stumble a little bit. We're going to run through the door here. Take this opportunity to turn your night vision on to navigate this uh, library here. Uh, through the door and we're going to see Chris for the first time. He's not a problem just yet. Not always until after we make this next jump and that's going to trigger another scene. So we're going to jump ahead after said scene and uh, we're going to pick up right where the gameplay left off. We're going to head to the immediate left and aim to retrieve a key, but we're going to be running past a few guys as well. Thankfully, these guys are pretty chill. Just watching some TV. Probably my favorite guys in the game, to be honest. Uh, bust through the door here. Run around, jump, grab the key. And we're going to head out of here past the guys again. They're still just chilling. No worries here. And, uh, yeah, once we hit the uh, right at the edge of the furnace there, we're going to jump forward. It's going to trigger this cutscene. Thankfully, this guy is no, of no real harm to us. He's just a jump scare, which you, whether you out, know Outlast or not, you will be quickly uh, used to numerous jump scares. This game loves them for better or worse. Uh, so with the key in hand, we're going to run down this way to the security office. Once again, jump to the uh a little uh, lock there, and we're going to see the father go ahead and turn off the power since he loves to slow us down and do everything he can to keep us from getting out of this place. To his credit, we do eventually kind of see why he aims this, but uh, it doesn't really bail him out. So Chris is going to be here, and what the game will intend for you to do is to hide in the lockers in this room. However, if you crouch right about where I am here, and I'm pushing against the little uh, spot sticking out there, just keep pushing the stick forward there, you can get through there with Chris knocking down the door. You will take a hit there, and uh, yeah, you can jump down the steps, but make sure not to jump from the very top, or you will take a fall. It... Uh, it won't kill you, but it will slow you down. So we're going to go ahead and flip on the night vision and head to the first of the power switches. Yes, the uh, the task and three action formula is something this game does a lot of. This is the first of them, but yeah, notice I'm jumping into the switches here. Um, I'd say probably the biggest challenge with a game like this in all reality is just making sure not to get yourself turned around. Uh, so hopefully this video will help in regards to that. Lots of uh, dead ends and everything that you can run into where you know, this area is a perfect example of it, where if you go the other direction, maybe you'll find a file or a battery or something, but you'll be kind of faced with the enemy in your way and. Well, the job's not done. Here we go. The power's back on. We're going to hop across once again, hop over the desk there and through the gap we're clear jump to the door Ooh, that was a little sloppy on that run there you can actually hop kind of sideways there 
and you'll be able to get to the door with your uh, character in line. I was a little off there, but we're going to run up here, hit the switch, and that's going to trigger another scene. So we wake up in this padded cell. Um, just walk up to the door here, and it will eventually trigger another inmate to come by and let you out. You do need to be by the door, though, for this to actually happen. And we're just going to hop down in front of the rail in front of us. Open this door. Turn to the left and you can climb twice. Uh, yeah, ignore turning on your night vision unless you want to see the silky silky scene. I'll just leave it at that and head on through to where we, uh, you know, learn about crossing over, sidling over these edges here. All right, so after that, just run and we're going to take our right and then a left. So with the quarantine rooms here, once the gas turns off, you can start running as long as your back is to the door. You can start running and then you'll be able to have your momentum start picking up right as the door opens. That should be true for every one of those doors throughout the game. Again, you just have to be all the way back. So this next area is a little tricky. We've got a guy here. Try to, well, he's facing backwards there. That was some good luck. But uh, really, you can kind of just jump to the side around him. You'll see me attempt to dodge a number of times. Ooh, a little bit of bad luck with him blocking there. But um, sometimes the enemies just won't hit you like that. Um, right there anyway. Now, obviously, if you're playing on Nightmare or Insane, your strategies will have to alter there. But that was a... A little bit of good fortune, but you can do a jump sideways kind of to dodge around some enemies if need be. We'll do it later in the run. We're going to hop out the window, learn about climbing along edges this way. Pull ourselves on in. And take the immediate left, even though the blood trail is leading you around. You need to stop over here, jump at the end of the shadow there to grab the key for the shower room. And just head on around, jump again, use the key card. And we're going to enter the pitch black shower room featuring the naked guys. So to dodge the naked guys, you will want to go out this window right here. Now we're going to do a dodge here after one, two, three, four, five. So immediately after jumping, we're, after pulling ourselves up, we're going to jump to the right. That's a very quick jump to the right after the fifth sidle over. And you will dodge the naked guy there. It's very easy to die there, so you know, don't be distraught if it happens a few times. Um, but if you're really worried, you can keep climbing to the right and uh, do what you mostly would be considered the intended route. And uh, it's another set of windows and you'll have plenty of space. It's just a lot slower on the speedrun side of things. Anyway, we're going to proceed forward. Down this way and get blown out this window here. Another little short scene here of our guy finding himself on top of a uh, just a lovely bit of Outlast. Quite the gruesome game, even by uh, 2024 standards when this is being recorded. So we're going to take a left, hop over this bed here. And we're going to take an immediate right before actually getting to the top of the steps. You can hop over that railing there. It'll uh, save you a little bit of time, help make it a little easier to get around Chris. And then just kind of work your way around here. And we're going to take this left, left, and then just follow the light here. The game guides you, at least for me personally, in my first playthrough. I didn't, I found myself feeling lost a little more than I liked <laughs> to be honest but um you know playing in again once i revisited the game and you know started to learn the speed run especially that became less of an issue so after that guy gives us a hug and then the other guy gives him a nice punch for that you know no means no right sidle on over and learn about jumping here Jump as soon as you can there. Don't jump too soon, though, or else you'll miss it and you'll fall down. 
very annoying when that happens. And yet another jump scare here. I usually turn the camera on here just to help me navigate to find the uh, the hole there and then the cell door here. Just work your way around and we're going to drop down the hole here. Try to drop to the left so you're facing the direction we're going now. You can hop over the railing there, drop down into this hole, crouch, and then definitely turn your camera on here to help you uh, find your placement where you need to be lined up. Drop, drop. Then head towards the light. And away from the light that time. The light is actually on your right there. When you're coming around there. If you're curious why there are loads, this is on the Xbox. I guess technically Xbox One version. I'm playing it on the Xbox Series X. But um, the PC won't have those, uh, those issues. But one upside is this version actually has a few less stutters. So you kind of get one or the other. Uh, yeah, we're going to take a right here. This is an area where Chris is coming. That's what that big thud was, was them falling, stumbling into the area. And we're going to head to the right, though. Turn this valve. There's a battery on the right there if you want to grab it. We're going to head around and we're going to have to head across to the left. You want to do the right side first, though, because Chris will see you after you do the first one, no matter what. However, doing the right first will give you an opportunity to escape from him and keep him away from you while you're going to turn the valve is because of this. The other way didn't have this squeeze through point. Chris will stop chasing you because of that. Or no, I mentioned the battery before. The battery is actually right there. You can actually see it uh, shining there while turning the valve. Yeah, I apologize. That was a little mistake. But anyway, we're going to come out of here. Go ahead and use your battery as need be. Obviously, you know, if you're trying to speed run, you want to conserve battery as well as you can so you don't run out at a bad spot. If you're just trying to get through this casually, though, ooh, don't make a mistake like that, for one. But, um... But, uh, yes, yeah, so if you're just trying to play this casually, just grab all the batteries you can and everything like that, and... And you'll be fine. You'll get... As long as you know where to go and just don't sit there, like, hiding and... With the battery out waiting for somebody to pass, you'll you'll be fine. We're going to head down into the sewers here, take a left, then an immediate right. Heading to the left to avoid the steam. We're going to head up this ladder here. Notice my battery is dead, so I'm going to make my first switch. Uh, the better you get at this, the more uh, confident you get in your movement and placement. You can the longer you can wait before replacing the battery. I've seen some runners wait until much further into the game for uh, switching their battery over. Um, I do want to clarify that while I know how to get through this game fairly well and know a decent number of tricks, this is strictly from the speedrun point of view. Um, I would say I'm a mid-level runner overall. Um, so think of this more as an entry level showcasing in that regard. But uh, anyway, after climbing down the ladder, we're going to head down some more tunnels here. Jump, crouch under this one. An interesting thing with these tunnels here, which I don't know why I'm using my camera here, but you'll notice you can see the wall very faintly. And just follow that. We're going to want to follow this to the right. It will uh, work to the left, I believe, up there, uh, right there. Yeah, let's head to the right. Go ahead and get out. Climb over. Through the door here. We're going to be entering the water area. Just... I don't know what I was doing there, but uh, jump across. Drop down, jump forward, and then another staircase to the left there. You want to head to the right. And into the water again. With, through the water, definitely just spam jump. It will speed you up dramatically. Especially in this particular section here. Because Chris is rubbing. So what I like to do is I jump forward three times. And then I jump up left diagonally. About four times. And then I'll keep going up until I see the uh, spot for the staircase. It's 
It's a pretty consistent way to know and keep yourself jumping forward um, without getting too close to Chris as well. You know, just try to hop around this guy, get around him one way or another. He will keep chasing you for a bit here, but he shouldn't be too much of an issue. On the easy, it seems like he takes um, three hits to knock you, uh, to kill you, so you should be more than fine with that. Yeah, we're moving right on through, squeeze through here. We're gonna head on up the steps. Into the next section of the game. Featuring, uh, soon to be the great Dr. Traeger. But before we do that, we're gonna learn about uh, pushing the shelves. So with these shelves, you need to just push them in just enough. You don't have to push them all the way. Uh, it's one of those things you kind of have to feel out. Um like how long you'll want to be holding the uh, button to do so. Usually about one and a half full, like one full push and then like another half to three quarters of one usually will do the job. And it's kind of hard to describe that. That's one that is uh, more from experience, but thankfully you don't have to do much of it under true duress. So again, you notice I'm facing the side of the vent, though. This is so I will fall down, but not stagger myself. We're going to just run over here and push. This is one of the great uh, chase sequences of the game. Don't panic too much here. The biggest thing is, is as long as you go the right way, you'll be more safe than you realize. You notice I didn't even close the door there behind me. Again, just keep, you know, push these out of the way. Head to the left. Over the bed, again to the left. And we're going to jump up this opening here. Again, go sideways so you don't uh, stumble too badly out of the vent. Jump this desk in the window. And wait with this jump till as long as you can to actually trigger your jump. If you go a little too early, you will miss it. Now, an interesting thing, though, is if you miss it, you may trigger the checkpoint um, ahead, which can work for some speedrun categories. This is glitchless, no save and quit. It would be invalid in this particular category. If you're playing casually, well, enjoy your you know, free advancement there if you did fall. <laughs> But once you hit the uh, elevator, the sequence is over. You're safe, even if you get that one hit. And there's Dr. Traeger. After our fun time with Traeger, we're going to go ahead and uh, leave this room here. And we're going to come up to this set of two doors. We can't open them yet, but notice how I'm lining up right in between the two doorknobs. After getting there, I'm going to take one full leap back. And then we're just going to wait. Hey, we just wait for the uh, the patient in the uh, other side of the room to finish his little um, speech here. And we're going to run to Traeger to the right. Our right, Traeger's left here. And here we go. Yeah, just right there. You'll get by him pretty much every time with that setup. We're just going to run immediately to this vent and climb up. Leaving Traeger in the dust. Once again, sideways. We're going to be facing to the left, so that way we're facing this shelf here. Go ahead and push this out of the way. This will come into play a little bit later. So we're going to see Traeger walk out in front of us here. We're going to run into the double doors on the left, where we were before. We're going to lure Traeger and use his greatest weapon against them. We're going to close that door behind us. That's not as scary as it may seem. Now, if you do die, I apologize, but a little practice and you'll get it every time. And Traeger is so slow with doors, you'll have more than enough time to push that shelf out of the way and, uh, you know, get yourself into this vent here. It's very weird AI in this game with how they handle doors. But, yeah, it's, it's the best way to get around him, especially in a... 
timely manner. So we're going to drop down here, head to the double doors, hop through here, and grab the key. So Traeger's going to break this door down. Now, there are various dodges you can do here. I kind of just line myself up, typically, and kind of try to get around him. I did a little jump there. As long as you just get by him, you'll be fine. And don't run directly into him, obviously. Uh, yeah, thankfully we moved that shelf earlier so we can get straight to the elevator. And just like that, you're finished with Traeger. I do want to take a moment to give a shout out to a community member on my Twitch channel, Pokorka. He was a great help in uh, me learning this run. Yeah, I just greatly appreciate that. Yeah, so thank you, Pekorka. We're going to continue on by climbing up the elevator here. Take a right. I, <laughs> a few near mat bad turns here. Work your way down the steps here. And you can just go straight through here. If you want to use your camera, obviously do so. Help you see some of these doors that'll be hidden in darkness a bit. We're going to head through here, take a left, and then a right. Then enter this door on the right. Into the bathroom. This is often where I would use another battery early on in runs, but... Yeah, as I've gotten a little more experience, I didn't have to. But again, kind of like with the water, hop through this fire segment here. Your character kind of puts his hands up and doesn't really want to run normally. Hopping's our best bet. After the uh, the fire room, though, just head to the immediate left. We're going to squeeze through here. And you guessed it. We're going to have to activate more items. Three of them, of course. And we'll have to do it with our buddy Chris hanging around. So the first one here, just head to the right through the door and it'll be for pretty much free. However, Chris is going to cut us off here pretty quickly. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a jump to the immediate left there. That can be a little tough. The big thing is, is even if he hits you, just make sure it's only one hit. Um, and it's very easy for me just to say, but. You know, once it, he's not hard to create space from, you know, once you get going. So as long as you know where you're going and you just don't get yourself blocked by him, you'll probably be fine. Where that can be a bigger issue is coming up here on the sprinkler sprinkler room where we actually hit the button to turn them all on. So we're going to once again do a jump around him here. And you, you can come in here and hit this button and it's almost like his AI is on pause a little bit. However, if you take just long enough, he can get there and block you in that doorway. So you do have a window there, but yeah, you know, don't just stand around waiting either. And we're going back through there and into the kitchen here. And all those fires are put out. And we're going to head outside. I'd imagine it was for me personally. It seems like a lot of people I've talked to about this game. The outside is probably their least favorite section because it is just so dark. And uh, yeah, I'd agree with that. We're going to head into the shed here. There's a battery right in front of you. Very easy to go ahead and grab and grab the key for the maintenance shed and just look for the light. And you know, that's the. Uh, Kind of the easy approach, but it's just straight ahead from the shed, pretty much. You you will see the light for it. You'll have to run around a few benches and things like that outside, but... Don't worry too much about the summon skull there. That's what I... I don't know why I call him that, but... Um, you don't have to worry about him too, too much. If you want, you could have your camera out there if you want to get a uh, one of the recordings on him, but... And run across the right beam there. Go across that gap. You can jump diagonally here, which is very useful for the speed run. 
Um, you can also do a jump to get onto this ledge here. It's very risky, though. If you miss it, you're either going to die or you're going to be having to climb all the way around again and your speed run will pretty well be dead. I was at a point that I just wanted to make sure I kept a run going and finished run and everything, especially one going well. So I opted not to do it there. Yeah, so just uh, kind of find your way around here. It's mostly just, again, turn to the left, find your way. Just keep going forward. Look for the opening in the fence there. I apologize. Apologize that these aren't the best directions. It's a little hard to be too specific with. But um, yeah, we're going to once you drop down there, though, head to the right a little bit and you'll see the spot to climb out, climb up pretty easily. Just do your best to ignore Chris. These ledges like this are a great spot to refill your battery as well. So once you get past the fence, we're going to go ahead and drop right down on top of those steps. Head forward, and after this brush, take an immediate left. And then an immediate right, as sharp as you can. You may take a hit from Chris there, but as long as you're, again, quick enough, that hit should be it. Sometimes you can get very unlucky and he pulls you through the hole and you have to run away from him, but I'd say that overall that's pretty rare as long as you're not too slow. That's it for the outside, for the most part, anyway, you know, we'll be, kind of be out there a little bit more, but that's the bulk of it. But yeah, we're going to head into the laundry room here. We need to get a key out of the laundry chute. And to do that, we're going to head on upstairs. Hop the broken out steps there. And we're going to get to some very interesting, a uh, couple of interesting inmates here. Namely, this very uh, determined uh, psycho here. So the first guy here, he'll kind of approach you, but in general, just grab the fuse and go. And you're, you're fine from him. It's this next guy right in front of you. He's one of the most persistent enemies, if not the most persistent, in the entire game. So I try to jump around him. Run to the left, grab the fuse next to the body, take another hit there, and then try to shut the door on him. He, you notice how close he is there, though. If you can't get that door closed, he's just too close. What you'll want to do is hop around here. Head to the left and shut that door there. I shut it there anyway, just to be safe. And again, head to the left. And then we're going to go through the spot here to the right. Now, you might be wondering, why am I going to this one last? The reason is, is if you go to this one first, the guy, the very persistent individual will actually already be heading out of that room that he kind of starts in. And yeah, he'll create a problem for you here and everything. So you have to run around him and you know, like I said, he'll just be a headache. So after we put the three fuses in, hit the button, and we got to go back down to the laundry room now to get the key. Ooh. Let's hop around there. And watch out for the wheelchair there. Very easy to run into if you're trying to save some battery. Hey, there's the third floor key. And yeah, you can pretty well ignore that guy that's about to open up the gate there. Yeah, let's head right on back and then we're just going to go to this gate on the other side. Yeah, I, I mentioned before about people replacing their batteries like when the uh, the higher end runs. This is actually the spot where I saw would see a number of runners actually replace their first battery. I wouldn't stress about that one bit unless you're going for a, a very top time and trying to really narrow your battery usage down and everything like that. 
just so you don't have to pick up any throughout the run. But, um, so in the early going, I just definitely recommend using the camera, finish runs, keep getting better at everything else, and then work that in accordingly. So through here, you're going to want to head to the right. It is This is the quicker route, and then through the double doors. Notice, though, you want to go to the right immediately, or the naked guys will kind of teleport to you and get you if you go through there to the left at all. So be very, very careful there. And the naked guys are insta-kills. Uh, they have those big machetes that they will just impale you with. They will stab you through with, and that'll be that. So here comes a part that I would imagine on a first playthrough is the most nerve-wracking, because that camera, wow, you know, it's... It's not like it's a weapon or anything, but boy, when it is your only tool for a whole game, losing it is... It's it's a bit of a big deal. But um, don't worry, it is it's actually a very short lived problem as long as you, you know, fall along, know where to go. I head through the bathroom here. We're going to drop down here and notice I'm going to try to drop sideways so we don't grab onto any of the ledges there. Through there and here comes yet another jump scare. That one is one of them I, I probably dislike the most just because it feels so telegraphed. You can actually see the guy standing there even before you trigger it if you're looking for him. But anyway, head through here. Just follow the light to your camera again. Well, pretty cool scene, though, when you play that casually and you just turn to the left and suddenly there's a bunch of guys. But um, We're going to work our way back through. Notice there's a nice giant crack in the camera. If you play this on PC, interesting note, and you put the settings on low, which is ideal for speedrunning, the crack actually does not happen on the camera. So we're going to work our way back through where we were and get back to exactly where the camera fell in the first place. Once again, around here, up over these beds. And there we are. We're, we're right back where we were. It's like it never happened. So an interesting jump is coming up. There's that little hop there. And then this one here. You want to run and get about halfway down here and jump. As long as you leap there you're, and not wait too long. If you wait too long, you're going to fall and die. And if you jump too early, you may not make it bleeding to death. Um, again, like a few things I've mentioned... It's something you may have to feel out, but once you start doing it, you'll probably get it pretty consistent every time. So we're going to be looking for the third door here. We slightly open and another vent for us to go through. Once again, dodging Chris. And I gave Chris credit. He gets around this asylum. I believe I was told the lore is that he is a uh, security officer, which... But suggests he, at one point anyway, was very knowledgeable with the area and uh, explains how he's able to get around so quickly. He definitely gets around. He, he covers a lot of these areas. Alrighty, so go around here. I think a little bit of an awkward movement through the uh, around that pool table and dropping down that little uh, hole there to get through, but. Not too, too bad. So on the controller, the B button, the Xbox controller, that is the B button would drop you down. Whatever you're playing on to drop down to start mashing it as soon as you get to that middle part. So the second you take a step, you can actually just fall down immediately. Very small little optimization you can do. And make sure not to do it too soon or else you'll fall down in the on the other side and you'll have to go back around and climb up, which is annoying. <laughs> but, you know, it can save you a second or so in the speed run. Head up there, we need to get into that projector booth. 
Open that up. There's another battery right on the shelf to the right of that door. I always grab it. Just in case. And we're going to head along here. Take your time to make sure you line up. Start sidling here around. Very, very easy to just kind of take that a little too aggressively and fall right off the edge. And then you won't die, but you'll have to go around and back up the steps and everything. And it's it's one of those, you know, kind of almost a moral defeat as much as anything. Or <laughs> it feels so bad that it happens. But anyway, we're going to grab the key and then come down to this door here. Stand right about here to the door. Once again, one of the machete guys will bust through after number five. There you go. And don't hesitate to get through there, but also make sure not to go too soon that the door hits you or he runs into you because it will lead to a death. And we're dealing with him. We're going to head into again into another another kitchen oh little tidbit don't run into that guy that's just standing there he's peaceful now he won't give you any trouble but uh, just don't bother him this is a recommendation we're gonna look through for the second door on the left here technically third door second like kind of bedroom and hey look we're back outside not a very long trip, though, just along the uh, window here, but. And there we go, back inside. We're going to head to the right. Ask the naked dudes, they're fine with us now. And we're going to grab the key next to the father. After this, we just need to wait out the cutscene for the naked dudes, to, and the naked dudes will open the door after the, uh, you know, the uh, the priest burns and everything. We're gonna go ahead and skip right about to that point. They let us out. It's time to go. We're gonna climb up this vent. And we guess who we get a dodge again? It's Chris. So what you want to do is lead Chris to one side of the hallway here. Either right or left. But make sure you get him there so that way you'll be able to get around him. On the uh, opposite side. Just climb up the vending machine. Cut through the kitchen. And we're at the elevator. Just like that. Heading to the final... The final big section of the game, the labs. Yeah, there are things that can, of course, happen in the labs, but I would say in most cases, this is where you can take a big sigh of relief. You know, certain things were giving you trouble of how they were done throughout most of that's actually removed here. You know, a lot of well lit areas and just a lot of a lot less threats to deal with, period. So you'll notice once again, back to the uh, idea of uh, jumping into doorways and everything as often as I can. Yeah, we're just going to work our way around here. Until we see the spirit here. I always call it the spirit. I, you know, like there's there's lore into all this. I just shorthand everything like that, though. But um, anyway, we're going to get here and trigger this warning. We're going to head back the way we came as soon as this goes off. There we go. Here, there are th methods you can do to kind of get the jumps over these uh, boxes as quickly as possible. Once again, jump into the door. And hey, look, it's Chris again. I was originally going to skip over this cutscene, but it was short enough, and it's just so darn satisfying to see Chris. Uh, well, 
get what he has coming here. He just gets worked over. And into the fence you go this time, Chris. All right. So with Chris officially removed, it's time for another cutscene. That's a lengthy one, kind of uh, explaining the final bits we need to do here. To wrap up the game. Our last major objective. We're going to just follow the arrows at the moment, and then the spirit is going to come in. You can completely ignore it. Just go through the double doors here. Head forward around this first big tank, and in between it and the second one. And then up the steps here. Really, I would say the spirits, it's kind of an issue of where, like some more things earlier in the game, it's not really a problem as, as long as you don't wait for it and just almost allow it to become one. And the longer you just kind of chill in an area, the worse it can end up being for you. I always said that with Alien Isolation, often. Not always with that game, but often in that game, you could have an issue of where you may hide for so long, it kind of gives the alien a chance to catch up to you. And in a way, that's kind of the case there as well. So you guessed it, though, we have more valves ahead. Just the name of the game. So here's number one. We're going to do a nice little uh, jump to speed this next part up. We're going to get to the right next to those barrels there. And you notice I'm going to land on those two tanks there. That'll break our fall and allow us to get out of here much, much quicker than going around the normal way. Nice little bit of speed tech. We're going to head forward here, take the left side here. It really doesn't matter. The left is a little quicker. Head up, jump through the gap. Jump through or no, don't jump through this door. Just run through that one since the door is open. Then we're going to head up the numerous stairs here. You got to give our guy credit. You know, he's fueled by the adrenaline and rush and everything of wanting to get out of here. But and considering what Traeger does earlier and you know everything else, all the running he's done, this guy's in great shape. All right, just make the jump there. It's not too hard to make that jump. Definitely a lot easier than the one in the chase sequence earlier in the game. Yeah, keep working your way around. You can go ahead and hop over that crate there. A little bit of a speed boost there for that. You can jump up the railing here on the left. Saves you from having to walk around the other side there. Jump into the power thing. Disconnect the power. And this runs about at its end. You can hop up the corner of that railing and walk along the back of it. And then allow you to drop down without hanging on to the bar. Again, not a huge difference, but it is a difference. And run through here, and then you can just do kind of a like little half-hearted jump here. Because as long as you go off the edge, that's all that matters. The spirit here will uh, grab you. I'm, I know I'm making somebody mad by calling this the spirit. I apologize. I really do. <laughs> I'm definitely more of an Outlast fan from in regards to the speed run. <laughs> but um, yeah, the, the half-hearted jump will get you there. It will trigger the scene instead of having to go and line yourself up and everything. Yeah, work your way down over to this console here. Everything done. That's the end of uh, that is the end of Billy. And look who it is. Simon's got his hands on us. I 
I can't help but think of make us whole again, Isaac. Every time I see that scene. But after the uh, fusion is complete, however you want to view that. We're going to start hobbling forward. We want to go for the right railing there. By getting the right to the right railing, we'll kind of do the stagger animation forward there. Like the little mini scene of him staggering forward. We're going to do another one of those here in just a moment. So after we get through the door here, we're going to turn to the right immediately. Like a sharp turn here and head for the chair there. The chair, once getting there, it staggers you forward. This animation will be the same no matter how you go through it, but that chair is the quickest way to get it to trigger. And then we're just going to hobble forward. Now, if you're speed running, your timer will be hit the moment we go down on a knee. Hobble, hobble, hobble. I'm, I remember just thinking, oh, my God, I'm so close to that sub 55 and down we go. And for a 54-51 on this particular run, but not too shabby. I was happy. That my that was my goal for this run. Um, I'm hope this I hope this run will be able to help anybody aspiring to speedrun this game. Hopefully, there were a few little tricks that can help you along on your uh, journey of learning. Or if you're just looking to play through this game, I hope this serves as a, an adequate walkthrough. Um, Obviously, if anybody ever has any questions, you can always post comments, post them in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer. And with this or any of the other uh, videos I've done, I try to do my best um, in answering them. I read all the comments I get, so I never, uh, never hesitate there. But yeah, after the... Uh, now, slightly... We'll call it unfulfilling ending there. The credits roll. You're done, like I said. Now it's on to Whistleblower, right? If you guys would like to see Whistleblower, uh, feel free to mention that in the comments as well. I have done speedruns of it. It is a very good DLC, although a, a little rough around the edges. I think if you played it, you you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> or if you've seen it, you know what I mean. But um, yeah, yeah. Just let me know what you uh, what you think there. I hope you enjoyed the video. It was a lot of fun to make. I'm I'm liking making these. We've been doing them, getting a little bit of consistency with them now. I I hope you like this format of video. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think. But uh, for now. That is going to be the end of it. I'm going to put a link to another video right here if you want to see some more speed run tutorials just like this. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.